And people say, well, where do you get them from? The social side. It's a social function. I bet you if I get them, let's ask the question. Show of hands, how many people join Freemasonry after going to a Freemason social function in the room? Who's half. If these things worked, why don't we do them again? And I hear some people say, well, um, we haven't got enough members in the lodge. Yep, dead right. Um, best, best night we had for that was the Mersey Ferry. Mersey Ferry took to three lodges. We had 300 people on the Mersey Ferry sailing up and down the Mersey. Tell you what, one of the biggest, one of the biggest things I'd organised and one of the most traumatic I've had to pay four and a half thousand pound out and hope that everybody turned up on the night was kind of like pretty scary but they did what it actually did though was it gave us a bond between the lodges a bit like we're doing now when we go and visit Cornerstone and Seacombe and Manor Lodge um, we go and visit these lodges because they're as much our friends and our youngsters' friends as anybody else. But when you arrange these functions and as the smaller lodges struggle, four or five of you together, I'll help any lodge at all that wants to organise a social function. Those of you that know Oliver Street, Oliver Street's doom, gloom and despondency, is it? It's all about organisation. Three weeks ago they had a murder mystery night planned. And they cancelled it. And they cancelled it because of lack of activity. Oh, and then the murder mystery crew, two of them had a heart attack and they didn't have a murder mystery crew. In two weeks, we've brought in a new murder mystery crew and there's 94 people going to that night. Anything's possible. You've just got to believe it's possible. And by building the social side, what you do is, you bring these youngsters into Freemasonry and they're having fun. We give them when they uh, have done their first degree lots of little things that people don't know. Um, got a couple over here. Some of you will have seen them. Things like um, an explanation of the first degree in layman's language. Or scouse as somebody said this morning. Um, but it makes light reading in a word that they understand. Goes in the back of the mentor manual. Next one. Family tree of Freemasonry. All the side degrees. What are they? Tell them what they're about. And what you do to get into each. Goes in the mentor manual. Tells them a little bit about what it's about. We give them these books. You give them a card with the words, we do it's in the mentoring manual. We give them a book to read. We give them another book to read. And then we give them the ritual book as well. All as entered apprentices. Yes, we give them the first degree ritual book. How many people have seen the first degree ritual book? That surprises me. It surprises me that more of you haven't seen it. The first degree ritual book talks about the traditional history, the tracing book, the tools. It talks about the ceremony that they've just been through. It costs eight pound. Give them it. Let them learn. If you give them the knowledge, it, they learn it at their pace. It's not you forcing them. I've had people come and say, read that. And I've read that. And they can ask questions and tell you why well, I've got masons that have been in there for 30, 40 years wouldn't be able to answer the questions. They share that information. They become sponges for this new thing they've been into. And they don't know any difference because we've all done it, haven't we? But we tell them. But when you read it, actually you find there's a lot more information in there for you. So what we've done is We've taken these youngsters in, we've embraced them, as we're supposed to do in Freemasonry, and we've given them the benefit of our experience by taking them out and meeting people. Visiting as an entered apprentice is powerful. 
even more powerful when you go and visit other lodges who are struggling for candidates and you're walking in with four, five and six end of apprentices. It makes to a really good night. The more people that are in the room, the more vibrancy the room has and the festival just becomes fun all over again. Like installations. All your installations are fun, aren't they? Because there's a big crowd in there, we bring all the brass in. Why isn't every meeting like that? Share it. Share it with the people. <coughs> As we move on, we're now progressing the process. The process is they own the Benson in manual that we get from Dave from five pounds. We give them little booklets that we've picked up from Grand Lodge. No, not the what about Freemasonry, the two booklets. There's absolutely a wealth down in Grand Lodge of other booklets you can pick up. And if you're going down there, they give you them for free. Don't know whether you can ask for them from province. I just scouse it in London. I've got to have something. I've got to have that. So you come out with a box. Now what are you going to do with it? But these booklets are all about giving information and sharing. Every person that comes to our festive board who is a non-Mason gets the first section of the mentoring manual by email. That's all. No pressure, no telephone call. We're not chasing them. It's giving them an interest about what is Freemasonry because we know the wife is going to do the damage afterwards. As we move on, set 35 strong now, we should hit 41, 42 by the end of this year. Social functions and everything. Barbecue. Barbecue is family. Bouncy castle. Grandkids. Sons. Daughters. Even though your son or daughter might not want to join, that doesn't say that they haven't got a friend that doesn't want to join. If dad asks them to come out and come to the family barbecue we're having for lodge, bring somebody else along. Think outside the box. It's about having a laugh. That social function is about having fun. Isn't that what Freemasonry is about? It's about having fun. The more you do it, the more it works. And it grows. Now in lodges that are small, if you're struggling, fine, hold my hand up, I'll help you. I'll help you in any way, shape, form or fashion, organising any type of function that you want and getting other lodges together if you want to bring the members in. Done. Um, I did this up in Stockport and so far I'm now out in three different regions doing exactly, three other provinces doing the same thing. Time is something that you make if you believe in what you're doing. I am passionate about mentoring. I am passionate about Freemasonry. When I joined it, it was all about wow factor. And I'm making sure that when we bring somebody into Freemasonry now, they have that wow factor. They're not pressurised. They're not bullied. They do things at their pace. They own mentoring manuals, not me. And they grow into situations. <coughs> Hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into what we've done and how we've done it from a standstill start. Anything's possible, it's entirely down to you. One of the things that I will say though is, as a mentor, never ever let a candidate leave the lodge room without you. Or somebody else. And if you've got a role in the lodge, an office in the lodge, and give the mentoring to somebody else, or teach somebody else how to mentor. Because there is nothing worse than giving that new young mason, throwing him out and leaving him by himself with the tyler, and nine times out of ten, the tiler is somebody that we've bought in, that's old school, that we're just having there to tile the door. In our lodge, we've made it a progression in the lodge. The IPM has to go to Tyler because we've given experience, he knows what he's talking about, he's active in the lodge, he goes outside, 
and we still send somebody else with the enter the apprentices, the fellow crafts, and even the master masons in some instances. What you're looking to do is you're looking to be there to tell them what's going on. We can tell them what's going on without telling them what's going on, can't we? But make them feel good. Because once they feel good and leave at the end of the night feeling great, I've had a good night, then what you'll get is, you'll get comments like I got when we went visiting Cornerstone last week. I got four texts, first thing the next morning, thanking me for the opportunity to see such a fantastic ceremony and a fantastic evening. They do things differently. And we've had that in many other lodges. Just remember, never let that candidate go out by themselves. <laughs>